Welcome back to The Path to Happiness and Introduction to the Unification Principle. I'm your host, Dr. Tyler Hendricks. As we saw in our last session, the Bible doesn't paint a pretty picture of our performance as God's children. Adultery, murder. The Messiah's mission is to free humankind from these two sins and to recover the beloved community in which we all can live as one family under God. It can be done. The second major event in God's story is that of another family, the family of Noah. You see, in the principle, we look at the Bible from the viewpoint of marriage and family relationships. It opens up a whole new vista because it teaches us how God works, not by us separating from our families, but by us creating godly families, which is the greatest act of love. Now, because Cain killed Abel, the providence of restoration centered on Adam's family was not fulfilled. But God's purpose to complete his plan for creation does not change. It will be fulfilled absolutely. On the foundation of Abel's faith, God established Seth, Adam's third, Adam and Eve's third son, and chose Noah from Seth's lineage to fulfill the restoration providence. After he was 500 years old, Bible counting, Noah had a wife and three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. God saw that human sin was never ending, and he saw that the thoughts of our hearts were always evil, and God lamented that he had ever created us. That is why God planned the flood judgment to begin anew with one family, Noah's family, in the same position as Adam's family. Noah's family, therefore, had to establish conditions of indemnity for, to make the foundation for the Messiah in order to complete the restoration providence. The central person to establish the foundation of faith was Noah. He was the second ancestor of humankind, called 1,600 years and 10 generations after Adam. God blessed Noah the same way he blessed Adam. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation, who walked with God. He followed God's instructions absolutely, and he built the ark. Even when the world around him mocked him and his family didn't understand what he was doing. Under these conditions, God was able to render the flood judgment when Noah was 600 years old. So Noah became the first father of faith. On the foundation of Abel's blood, he fulfilled his role as the central person when the earth was corrupt and full of violence. The ark was the conditional object for the foundation of faith. Noah was able to establish the foundation of faith by building the ark. The ark symbolized the new creation. The three-story structure meant the three stages in the period of growth. The eight family members who entered the ark, Noah and his wife and his, their three sons and their wives, represented the eight people recorded in Adam's family, as well as all humankind. And the animals represented all things in the universe. The reason God judged for 40 days of rain was to indemnify the four-position foundation in each of those ten generations from Adam to Noah that Satan had claimed. Forty, therefore, represents separation from Satan to make the foundation of faith. And it shows up again and again in the Bible. For example, there is the 400 years from Noah to Abraham, 400 years in Egypt, Moses fasting and prayer for 40 days, the mission of the spies in Canaan for 40 days, wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, the reigns of Saul and David and Solomon, kings of Israel, each were 40 years. Jesus' fasting and prayer was 40 days. When Jesus returned after the resurrection, it was for 40 days. The events that came 
Now, after this 40 days, Noah's 40 days of the flood judgment had profound implications for the future of heaven and earth. And it's very interesting. Noah sent a dove from the ark once every seven days. The first sending represented Adam being sent to the earth. That dove returned to Noah, meaning it could not stay on the earth. The ideal of a perfect man in Adam did not stay on the earth, went back to God. The second dove represented Jesus. It too could not stay, it returned, but with an olive branch in its mouth giving hope. The third dove represented the second coming. It found hospitable soil and stayed on the dry land, meaning that Noah too, representing God, could return to the earth. Meanwhile, Satan was looking for a way to invade Noah's family. The Bible reveals this by saying that a raven was hovering over the water, looking for a place to land. To fulfill the foundation of substance, Noah's sons, Shem and Ham, should have established the condition of indemnity in the position of Cain and Abel. To do this, the second son, Ham, had to inherit the foundation of faith from Noah. Then Ham could easily restore Abel's position for the foundation of substance. So Ham had to be completely one with his father Noah. The one story in the Bible about Noah's family after the flood reveals Ham's failure. It goes like this. Noah planted grapes and he made wine and he fell asleep naked and intoxicated in his tent. His act was not evil. He was naked and not ashamed. And actually God took joy in Noah's innocence as he rested in relaxation. But this was also a test of Ham. How would Ham react? When Ham saw his father naked in the tent, he took offense. And what's more, he incited his brothers, Shem and Japheth, to walk into the tent with their backs turned to their father and with a blanket cover Noah's naked body. Noah woke up. And when he found what his second son had done, he cursed Ham's lineage to slavery. Now, why do these apparently good actions bring on such a terrible curse? The reason Noah was naked was to restore God's feelings of seeing Adam and Eve naked, free from sin, before the fall. That is why Noah, in a renewed position after the flood judgment, was naked without feeling any guilt. He was like Adam before the fall. Ham's shame put him in the position of Adam and Eve after the fall, filled with shame over their lower parts. Thus Ham was not one with his father's foundation, and he could not appear before God. Satan, the raven that was trying to invade Noah's family, found the condition. And he invaded the sons of Noah, who stood up and proved that they were still Satan's descendants, not God's descendants through Noah. Ham failed this providential test and did not become one with Noah's heart. If, if Ham had respected his father without any conditions, he would have become the central person for the foundation of substance. He already showed that he could lead his elder and younger brothers because of Ham's mistake, the condition to forgive, to get rid of the original sin was not established and the restoration providence centered on Noah's family failed. Let's look at the lessons we learned from Noah's family. The first is that the way to heaven, heaven is one of humility, patience and obedience. Even if Ham was unhappy with what, what he saw Noah do and didn't understand Noah's actions from an ethical point of view, he should have meditated 
on how his family was saved because Noah endured so much suffering and criticism to build the ark. He should have known that Noah's actions had a reason that God was working through his father, even if he didn't understand how. Thus, he should have disciplined himself and been patient instead of rushing to judgment. The second is that God judges according to the results of every detail of our actions. Because of Ham's seemingly small mistake, God had to sweep away Noah's family entirely. The third is that if the central person does not fulfill his responsibility, God will replace him or her with another. Well, what happened after Noah? After 400 years and another 10 generations, God called upon Abraham to succeed in the position of Noah. So far, we have two batters up and two batters down. We're down to the last batter, Abraham. Human race isn't doing so well. And actually, Abraham has a lot of problems at the outset as well. But in the final tally, God turns out to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How did that happen? The story of Abraham and his descendants is rich and powerful. We'll start in on it in the next session. Thanks for listening, and God bless you as you build your ark.